An A-B test is when you actually have two variants of two different things that you want to test. In this live workshop, we're going to talk about the tiny little A-B test that will generate massive results. Let's break it down to the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. What is A-B testing? An A-B test is when you actually have two variants of two different things that you want to test. So let's say you want to do a change to your application or your website, and you're not too sure how that's going to perform. Well, instead of launching it live for everybody, you actually run your old ver version to half of your user, for example, the new version to the other half, and then compare the results. And what's really awesome about it is it allows you to actually measure results based on that specific change you're testing rather than external factor like a marketing campaign or a bank holiday, anything else that can happen that actually can influence your results that allow you to prevent any of that and have something that's fairly accurate. How much data should we be letting an A-B test? I mean, I'll launch it, I let it run. From what I've seen in the past, you do need a minimum amount of download, but if you have at least a couple hundred downloads a day uh, as an app, you can test your activation for now, you can test monetization, you can test quite a lot of things. And I've been working with apps that have as little as 50 downloads a day and are testing and they're getting significance. And I work with apps that have, you know, millions of downloads and yeah. also are testing and getting significance. So it's more about how many people will be exposed to what you're testing. Let's say you've got 50 downloads a day, you can test your activation funnel. You can test that landing page over and over again. But probably you can't test something that happened really deep down the funnel on your app where maybe five people actually have access to that specific part of your app. Then that's a bit of a waste of time. So it's more what do you test rather than how many people do you really need to test. Speaking of what you said, like it's more important what you test. Do you have like, hey, I like to test this first and then this first, mm -hmm. especially for like smaller apps, let's say around under 100 downloads? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I love to start from the beginning. You know, people land on your app. Let's start there. Let's see, you know, first reaction. And I love it because most apps at that point, they have something like register, continue with Apple, any sort of very clear CTA. And you can just have a very simple view, click on CTA test, right? We're not even looking at retention. We're not looking at engagement. It's a very simple, I've seen it, I click it. Simple to implement and the most people will actually see it on your app. So that's where I love to start. And then kind of taking it down the funnel slowly. And once you have enough user, you have a good understanding of your data, then there's way more you can do. You can actually have proper flow in your app. You can look at how a test doesn't impact the direct action, but actually long-term metric. And you can look at retention. You can look at monetization as well. You can look at snowball effects. And that becomes super fancy and it's fascinating. And when you get there, you kind of, yeah, you have to love A-B testing because it's amazing. One of the metrics I look at, Leah, is like install or first open to like paywall view. I want to get that close to 100% as possible, especially for non-subscription apps. Is there like a metric that you like to focus on to kind of mm -hmm. discover hey, where are the holes that I need to figure out where to test? Yeah, I wouldn't even start with monetization. I would literally just start with your registration number, right? How many okay. people are actually registering on your app? And depending on that funnel of where that is. So, you know, if registration is the first thing that happened on your app, for example, and it's gated, there's just that one screen that you have to test and see how many people are going through that funnel. And like, for example, if I talk about that, I, I have tested in the past changing the registration method you show on that screen, and we've seen significant improvement changing the copy on that screen and you see significant improvement. So that's where I really like to start because it's small, it's controlled as an environment and you do have a lot of users going through those pages. Can you share what works from that registration test? Yeah. What didn't? So what we did was we actually did an analysis of our current user registering our apps and we looked at what method of registration they were using. So we found out that on Android, 97 plus percent of our user were using continue with Google and less than 3% were using the other method of registration that we had. Um, and on iOS, it was a bit lower. I think it was about 90% ish were choosing continue with Apple and the rest, the other method. So it didn't really make sense to have people go through two steps to see, you know, four or five registration method when we knew that the vast majority was going to choose that one. So we changed the UI to lead with continue with Apple on Apple, continue with Google on Google, and have everything else under like other registration method. And that actually increased registration by 5%.
SoundCloud's only getting 65% of all mm -hmm. users to actually register. Is there a number that you're trying to hit when it comes to registration? So it depends by what we mean by register. If it's just the oath situation where, you know, you mm -hmm. identify yourself with Apple or Google or whatever, then that needs to be above 80% in, in my oh. You know, on consumer app, like that number should be quite high. There shouldn't be a lot of blocker there. And I like to see that quite high. I've seen apps that have it as low as 50%, but I've also seen apps that have it around like 90 something percent. So what? I think you can play. Yeah. And I do genuinely feel like that also come a lot from your brand awareness and right. the trust that you already established with people. So it's not really just a, you know, hey, this is a big button. Please press it. Hey, I want to <laughs> get your thoughts on this. A B test that we did. So one of the things that we did with one of our clients is we actually flipped it. Calm forces you to register. Obviously mm -hmm. they can X out. Now for our client, there's no X. You kind of have to register and then you move on to the paywall. But we moved the paywall up and showed that first. And then we showed, showed them the registration and we saw a 52% increase in sales. That's why I led to monetization and I prefer to show the paywall first. Do you have any thoughts on this? I've tried something like that, but we saw opposite results. Really? So, I, yeah, it wasn't big. I think it was a small job, but it didn't work. I think it really depends on what's come before that paywall, you know, how good the onboarding is, how on point your copy is. Are you, you know, taking people on a, on a very clear journey? So you're very well positioned, which means by the time the paywall arrives, there's no surprise. People know it's expected and they see clear value and they want to go ahead versus kind of just dropping a paywall here in the middle of the experience. That's why I was like, install the paywall view. And he saw 40%. He, his paywall views went up from 40% to 94%. And yeah. his trial activations, 190% increase in 52% increase in sales. Just by flipping the two. I mean, yeah, that's look, pretty cool. I think it depends on where your goal is. What tools are you using for A-B tests? I do love amplitude experimentation. I think it's fairly new. I believe they launched it a couple of years ago or so. And because I use amplitude a lot for all my data analytics, I think it's really cool because it's all integrated. From what I hear from engineering, it's also very easy to implement. So I do have a soft spot for this one, but I've also tested other things like split.io work really well as well. Pretty cool. Mm. Optimizely, pretty cool as well. And for paywall, I do love Purchasely. I think that's so cool because you don't need any engineering. And I think you can use Firebase too, if you wanted to yeah. do a more affordable solution too.